Hello, everybody. Uh, I know that one of the Ten Commandments is not to use paper in your presentation, but I'm afraid there are too many words for me to know by heart, so I hope you will indulge me with this, uh, will you? I take it as a yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Roger Waters, my idol and my enemy. Sometimes he proves to be one of the best poetic and musical expressions of what I feel, but some other times I feel somehow stuck in this enthusiastic admiration without the possibility to go further, to discover new things. But you know what? In this particular case, even if he is so ironic, Roger Waters is right. The world is a miracle. And he says, and I quote, by the grace of God Almighty and the pressure of the marketplace, the humankind has civilized itself. End of quotation. Yes, it's a miracle. Fourteen years ago, I met a young theater critic from Holland in a theater seminar. He said, and I quote, I have been to Romania and it was beautiful. He really liked it. You have wonderful people, wonderful scenery, and wonderful fat food. You like it. But many of the people I met and talked to are somehow stuck in artistic references, he said. For example, in music, you all seem to be at least engaged, if not married, with Pink Floyd, Genesis, and Yes. You call this conservation of values. But I'm not so sure that I can call this habit like that, he said. But his words, conservation of values, led my mind to the times more than 20 years ago when the Communist Party was planning everything for us. We had limited access to food, to electricity, to hot water, even to sex, as the interruption of pregnancy was completely forbidden. As a reaction, we were stocking, we were hoarding, we were buying food for the bad days that were going to follow. We couldn't stop that, could we? So, you have an explanation of hoard, yes, thank you. And we were talking something else too. We were talking books and records. Lots of Romanians had real private libraries in their living rooms. We were treasuring, we were holding what we call culture as a personal thesaurus, as a personal secret cave of Alibaba. We used to say that we resisted, that we withstood communism through culture. Reading a lot and listening to music uh, brought by friends, and relatives, and tourists from the West, and we resisted communism. Well, I do not agree to this point of view, but this is a totally different story. I will never say that Keeping books and records in one's house is a bad thing. On the contrary, this is a wonderful thing. But as long as that particular collection of books and records is a dead museum, that place is not the barricade for resisting. That place is a sort of atomic bunker where you hide yourself from the world. What I want to say is that because of the political totalitarian condition of life that we have, one of the main meanings of the world culture was missed by us. We lost its active, social, and community meaning. For many Romanians, culture became a very private, a very personal, a very individual value. In essence, it became rather a decorative value than an active one. And we perverted some of the meanings of culture. So, with your permission, I'll tell you a story from that time. I was acting in a small amateur theater group. Before appearing on stage in front of an audience, we had to be checked by the ideological censorship. The institution who was responsible for that was called the Committee for Education, no, the Committee for Socialist Education and Culture. And the headquarters of this committee were in a big building, very big building. That building was called by people the culture. We were naming a building the culture. So I'll give you a linguistic example for that time. If you were asking, where do you live? 
You might have gotten the following answer. Oh, I live in a block of flats quite opposite to the culture. <laughs> well, in my town, the big one, the hot shot of that communist institution, was Konrad Kolesha. That was his name, Kolesha. Konrad Kolesha. He came to check our performance from an ideological point of view. But, I don't know, that night he was a little bit drunk and he fell asleep while we were acting. At the end of the performance, one of his assistants came and said in a whisper, Mr. Kolasha is very tired as he worked all day. You will go home and come back tomorrow. He will be here as tonight, Colin Kolasha sleeps in the culture. <laughs> okay. Because of this very foggy and very sophisticated process of multiple meetings, many Romanians do not make a clear distinction in between what we understand by arts and what we should understand by culture. Yes, of course, art is culture. But we consider that if we have a few shelves filled with books, if we go to a theater or to an opera performance, we can keep in our need for culture. But it doesn't work right Here's the first definition of culture that anyone can find in the Cambridge Dictionary. Point. Okay. Culture, the way of life, is actually the general customs and beliefs of a particular group of people at a particular time. So let's keep in mind way of life, general customs and beliefs. We consider ourselves to be a very cultural nation. But in the most paradoxical way, we call the Western democracies the civilized world. It's very hard to understand that. So we consider ourselves very cultural, but we name the Western democracies the civilized world. Wow, how's that? I mean, we even mock at some Westerners, uh, and we make jokes when they are not able to point on a map, let's say France. Or when they don't know who Dostoevsky was. But we still say that the Western democracies are the civilized world. What makes us do that? Well, my guess is that we do that because somewhere inside we know, without willing to admit, that our understanding of culture is partial, is not complete. That treasuring, hoarding, piling, stocking culture is not enough. The culture has to work, to convey values, to bond people and communities, to support collective ideas, and maybe most important, to lead us to a way of life that... But this purpose cannot be our private libraries in the intimacy of our library. And considering that we are a cultural nation, this is not enough. Culture means also collective attitude, and common active values. There's a definition for civilization. Human society with its well-developed social organization, or the culture and way of life of a society or country at a particular period of time. Well, so culture means a lot more than music, art, theater, literature, or cinema. Culture is a way of life that leads us to civilization. Let's keep us in mind. Okay, why do I bother you with these things? Good question, isn't it? Because I want to remind you that culture has not only exclusive intellectual meanings. Culture is not only cultural. Culture is also very normal. It's an important part of our lives. I mean, engineering, scientific research, uh, care for the urban and for the natural environment consideration for minorities, the way we eat, what we eat, even personal hygiene, these are all, and innumerable more others, this is culture. I mean, culture is not one hour and a half when we go to a performance. Culture is all day long. Culture is lifelong. Because we consumed culture in such private conditions, many times we feel very possessive when we talk about something cultural. And because the lack of a community experience, we give culture an exclusive intellectual meaning. That's why we do not share culture. 
we accumulate culture in order to build our individual intellectual status, let's say. That is why we became a sort of cultural territorial animals. Should we try to become citizens as well? We feel that our experience from the frustrating communist years helps us to better understand culture. And more than that, consequently, we believe that we understand the West better than people who live there. Well, but that works the other way around too. I mean, my idol and my enemy, Roger Waters, is pretty sure that he understands poverty and injustice from his beautiful castle in England's countryside. But I believe him. I really believe him. I'm not interested in his bank account. I'm fond of his music. And his lyrics are not the only filter through which I see the world, but a point of reference of many points of reference where I feel comfortable. Comfortably numb, one might say. But what's very important is that I think there could be life after Roger Waters. Unfortunately, we often forget that. And because of this very possessive and very personal way of understanding culture, we used to go to a performance as a jury, as a committee of intellectual, not as a normal audience, not as a normal public. In a very paradoxical way, this habit transforms us in a sort of fundamentalist intellectual tribe. I'm not saying we shouldn't be critical, on the contrary, we should be critical. But what I say, and I stress upon this fact, is that we create a huge hypocrisy. We are judges of everybody's way of life, but we cut all means of communication in between culture and our way of life. And we mourn for the lack of civilization. But there's also a good part. Here's the good part. If there is life after Roger Waters, there should be life after hypocrisy too. Today is a good day, but what about being happy to meet tomorrow in a very normal way? That, distinguished members of the audience, that is a miracle. The miracle to reveal tomorrow. Thank you.